Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is America's Heroes Group Veteran Business Owners Roundtable here on WVLM 1690, the talk of Chicago. It is August 24th, and uh, we, of course, I'm Cliff Kelly, the host. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith. Our digital media producer is Manny Corazari. And we have two gentlemen here in the studio that are going to give us some great information on veteran business owners. We have Lynn Lauder, who uh, major in the U.S. Marines, uh, a veteran co-founder and co-CEO of the Veteran Business Project. Uh, Mr. Lauder is, as I mentioned, the co-founder of the Veteran Business Project, along with being a former trial attorney. He has held various business leadership positions to include general counsel, mailboxes, etc., COO, Colt Firearms Trustee, Marine Military Academy, Director of Veteran Services. We could go on and on and on. <laughs> uh, we're so happy to have him with us. Um, as a Marine Infantry Officer, I have to say this, he served as a team leader with the First Force Reconnaissance Company, a Special Operations Unit in South Vietnam, where he was awarded the Silver Star Medal for Valor, the Brown Star Medal with Combat V, and the Purple Heart for Wounds Received in Action. His combat and business experiences have been profiled in several books, and he is an author, keynote speaker, mentor, and past board member with a nonprofit profit organization. Pleasure to have you here. Glad to be here, Cliff. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, that's Lynn Lauder. Also, we have Dale Eisenberg with us. Dale is the CEO and CEO and the co-founder of Veteran Business Project. He has been a successful restaurateur for over 40 years, having owned multiple original pancake house restaurants in Toledo, Ohio, and the Chicago suburbs. He also founded Two Toot Train Whistle Grill, <laughs> <I love it. laughs> a train-themed family-style dinner concept which has been expanded throughout the Chicago area. The son of a World War II pilot, Dale is a dedicated advocate for our veterans and their becoming successful small business owner slash operators. It's a pleasure also, sir, Dale, to have you here. My pleasure. Great, great, great. This is, this is just a great... Uh, Thing to talk about veteran business project uh, why don't you start us off with this major sure mm -hmm. well as you said cliff we're, and by the way thank you for having us oh absolutely uh, we're a 501 c3 mm -hmm. uh, two years ago i stood up a veterans uh, program at a university in missouri i went over there as between jobs and i was there to help veterans do the two things veterans always do when they come out of the military especially combat they're trying to figure out two things. Number one, who am I now? And number two, what's my lane in life? As I met these young men and women and helping them matriculate in a college system, I was there in a support role. So many of them were coming in daily and asking me uh, questions. Uh, I understand you were in business, right? Yes. Uh, what kind of business were you in? And then how did you get into that one? And where did you go to get money to get in that business? Where did you get customers? How do you keep customers? How do you handle money? Fascinating. When I came back, I uh, still have my law degree, I plowed into the GI Bill. Uh, it was called the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944 when it came out. The uh, veterans had two, had two of the same choices we have today, Cliff, but they had one significant that we don't have. It came off the table in the mid-50s. It was the, the uh, choices were, and that's what became the GI Bill, mm -hmm. get a degree, get a job, paid for, mm -hmm. get a train, get a job, paid for, but in World War II, if you wanted to buy a farm or business property, the Fed would be a 50% loan guarantor up to a threshold amount. In the nine years following two, World War II, 49.7% of our veterans ended up being small business owner operators. Wow. By the time Korea comes along, it was down to 40. Mm -hmm. And now, post 9-11, it's 4.5% and dropping. And the reason why is veterans cannot get loans. I tell people that that wonderful uh, holiday movie, It's a Wonderful Life, mm -hmm. we all remember Jimmy Stewart played sure. a guy named George Bailey, right? Right, right. right. George right. Bailey's long gone, sad to say. Community banks are not community banks anymore in the sense they were back in the day. And so they've been bought up by larger banks. 
the irony of all this, Cliff, is that we'll send a kid off to college, a teenager, with tens of thousands of dollars of loan money for his, for his college education. College uh, and that, that, that young man or woman, their credit score or their collateral aren't even a factor. They don't even have to have it. But we can have a young machine gunner from the Marines or the infantry and the Army that come out, been over there laying it all out for us. They go into a bank. Young man, what's your credit score and what's your collateral? And if he's going at the SBA, he's got to have a credit score of 680 and up, and he has to have a dollar's worth of collateral for every three he wants to borrow. Something's terribly wrong with that. So we set about to change laws, Cliff. And we went at it with the GI Bill, and we went at it to put state loan guarantee programs in place to try and get this thing fixed. Because these men and women today, as you well know, they've got everything our World War II folks had, Veterans are veterans. They step across the line. They uh, lay it out. They hold their hand up, take the oath. Everybody today has got what they've always had. They've got the grit, the, the can-do spirit, the smarts, the team play, the loyalty. They got all that. They just need some gas in their tank by way of access to capital. Over that time that we've been doing this, we've had a phenomenon happen. I'd like to say we planned this, Cliff, but it, 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 we didn't see this one coming. Okay. We have an aging population of small business owners in this country. By, the, by way of veterans alone, 45% right now of current veteran-owned small businesses in America are owned by people 65 years and older. Which percentage? 45%. Wow, okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have a, a flipping here, a process. And we're either going to have veter- people that are both veteran and non-veterans because the same phenomenon is occurring in the non-veteran population Mm -hmm. too. So we've got businesses that have existed or have done well or viable, but people are going to be coming up on a a choice to either sell or close the doors. That's one thing we've we've picked up on. So we've had people, Mm -hmm. typically baby boomers, coming to us and saying, hey, we heard about you all, and uh, we've got this business. This is sort of the typical way it goes, Cliff. The couple will Mm -hmm. say, it's been good to us, it supported us, put our kids through college, but now the kids have their degrees and they're out of the state. They don't want anything to do with the family business. We'd like to retire to Florida. Could you maybe help us find a business owner? And we always say yes, or a business, someone who want, would want what to buy it. Mm-hmm. So we always say yes, and we basically try mm-hmm. and match them up. Mm-hmm. We called it the Apprenticeship to Ownership Program. About a year ago, the demand was, was so increasing that we pivoted and we named ourselves the Veteran Business Project. You know the eHarmony business where people want to get a date? Great. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) So we coined the name V-Harmony, and we are the V-Harmony of veterans that are looking to get into business with people over here to match them up that are looking to sell their businesses, and we 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 casework these cases, we match them up, and uh, we we take them all the way through. It, frankly, Cliff, it's a much better play rather than try and manufacture a new car and invent it and so forth. Why not buy a good used car that gets you there? So now when we work with a veteran, we, we say go in there and work in that business and see if it's for you. We're talking to the owner. We say be straight with this veteran. Mm-hmm. Tell him if, if she or he has what it takes. We casework him, and Dale does a lot of this. He's, he's the heavy lifter in this in many ways. Uh, we, if it's a match, then we go to work on the financing part, and I can tell you more about that later. I need to, need to uh, yield the floor here. Well, this, this, is, this is great, uh, Major, uh, Consular, whatever. Just, <laughs> just, Lynn. just Lynn, please. <laughs> okay, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it all, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Cliff. Oh, that is just that, that's great information. Uh, let's go to Dale, Mr. Eisenberg, go right ahead. Well, what yeah. I basically do in the program is I do the case work. Before you, before you do that, because uh, th- this is just something, has no, I mean, it has something to do with it, obviously. This is America's Heroes Group. Your son was a World War II pilot. My father. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, you're the son of a World War II. Yeah, yeah your that. father, I'm sorry. What, I just wanted to know what was he flying, because I... You got me on that. He didn't oh. talk that much about it. He was a toggleer. It was a yeah. It, it was what bombers. Oh bombers. Yeah. Okay, bombers. bombers. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so he he was training. He actually was getting geared up and ready to 
load bombs and go overseas, and they said the war's over. You get to go home. Oh, he didn't. He okay. didn't actually have to go over, and it wasn't you going well see, for a lot of those The pilots. reason I ask that all the time, well, I won't get into it because the people who know me know why I would ask this question. They all, but the thing, those bomber pilots, uh, not bomber pilots, but the crews, you know, 30 and you go home. And not many made 30. That's right. And so right. you know was that because, Yeah, when you... Yeah. And what I've always wanted to do, once a year they have, and you probably both know this, there's an airfield out in one of the and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to go because I just want to sit in one of those, you know. So sure. that's why I was asking these questions. Sure. Well, it was a little yeah. crowded where he was at in the nose of the Oh, of the yeah. Plane. He was in the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Was a bomb and, oh, well, a pilot, sure. Yeah, yeah pilot. So. Yeah. You're yeah, right. I'm sorry. I just had to say that. Go, no, go right ahead, there. No Dad. problem. Yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Really, what we do is somebody would register with us. They'll read about us on our website or they'll hear from another veteran. Mm -hmm. And they'll contact us and tell us what they're looking for. If they're looking for a business in Iowa, for instance, we, we actually have a business right now that's available. Uh, they then would show their interest. They do a little legwork for us. And at that point, then, we would then take them to the next level uh, a great example is this uh, boat we did here in Chicago, mm -hmm. the Chicago fire boat that you have there. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. That was a perfect example of what we do. And the actual deal went very quickly. It started in January. They contacted me. They had no idea how to go about getting financing. They love this Chicago fire boat. Tell us what that is. So a lot of people... The boat that we're looking at here? Yeah, right. It's a retired 1935 Chicago fire boat. It was taken off commission, I think, 1980. But this, this boat, there was a couple of them. This one actually was an icebreaker, and they used it during the fire at the McCormick Place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They put out a number of fires over on the river. And they, what they did is, in 1980, it was retrofitted to be a tour boat, and it was taken up to Wisconsin. These guys thought it was available. They wanted it. These are two Navy veterans, and That's they great. knew each other, and they just wanted to do this so badly, didn't have the money, came to us, we put together a, a business plan with them, and we took them to Wind Trust Bank, who mm -hmm. really thought outside the box and helped these guys get financed. So the boat is actually operating right now behind you here. It does Good, river right tours. Right here on the river, yeah. yeah. Isn't that great? It does lake and river. Yeah. So it's, it's a great, great thing. It's called great. Fireboat Tours. It's a couple yeah, of great guys. Fireboattours.com. Yeah. yeah, so it's on our site. So that's what we do. And then once they're done and they're up and running, they're not done with us. We're still there. We're mentoring. We to help them check on them. Some, mm -hmm. Yep, and we're in their business, and we've become part of the family. I'm looking at the picture of the exterior, which looks great, but the inside looks even better. <laughs> it <is. laughs> oh, yeah. It's yeah. got some serious history. Yeah, and yeah. It, so it, they, they do more of an educational tour than just an architectural. That is, that's that's just great. Uh, and two Navy veterans. Two Navy how, veterans. How could it fit any better than the Navy oh, veterans? Right. 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 E exactly. Yeah. That's a great uh, example of the veteran business project. What what else do we need to know? This is one of, by the way, I should mention our number is, uh, WVON call in is 312-374-8130. If you'd like to ask a question of these two gentlemen who are giving us some great information, 312-374-8130. Uh, that's just great, that, uh, and, and this is working well. It's working great. Yeah. More and more people are signing up. We're getting more businesses interested in selling to veterans, and they're being creative about it. Mm -hmm. They're not mm -hmm. just like a regular. We're not brokers. Mm -hmm. We do this because it's what we love to do. And uh, so the best thing to do if a veteran's interested, they would go to our website, mm -hmm. veteran res can't say it, veteranbusinessproject.org, and the business would sign up the same way. That's just great. I'm looking at. I'm still looking at that picture of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Well, you're gonna have to go for a tour there. Right? Yeah, I, I will. We'll, well wave I will. them down when they go yeah. by. Yeah, absolutely. I will definitely do that. I like being on the water anyway. And uh, that's that's just great. So, uh, Consular, what else do we need to know? Cliff, we uh, we have. I sit on the SBA's advisory committee for Veterans Business Affairs, and that's gotten me more and more under the tent of financing and why it's not happening. We came across a program called the Community Development Investment Fund. Mm. It's from the Department of Treasury. Okay. 
you know, uh, D.C. is a big place, and one hand not knowing what the other is. And uh, I wish we would have known about this. It's been out there for many years. It's a program that was, was designed for inner city and rural to be a jump starter for economy. It is the closest thing to a silver bullet we have found on this financing issue. We are marrying up with a large CDFI uh, that's West Coast oriented, that's in a network of CDFIs that cover 60% of the country. And we then will have V-Harmony matched up with really accessible capital so that the heavy lifters in combat, the junior enlisted folks Mm -hmm. that do it all so much, now that machine gunner, he or he can get the loan that he richly deserves. So now we've got that combination V harmony and the money. Now we can start making things happen. We want to go to this work. We've already talked to people about this. We want to start moving on the south side of Chicago. We are looking for some of those people that have got their businesses and they're thinking about retiring and they want to settle. Let's not have any more open and empty storefronts. Let's keep those businesses going. So what we want to do is we want to hold some meetings in the south side. We want to have people come in there and tell us about what they're doing, and we want to tell them about who we are and what we're doing. And we want to start matching them up, those opportunities, with veterans to go into business. And then we tell veterans, and once you all get in businesses, he or her, you reach back and you hire other veterans. You get them in there and you mentor them and encourage them. One last point. You know, Cliff, we've got a problem in this country with suicides in the veteran community. Absolutely. All right? Mm-hmm. And the very bottom line is that this, the, the bottom line of all this is about hope. Because if a person doesn't have any hope, yeah. the world becomes a dark place. Right. You match up. If you can't get a job, if you don't think you're fitting in, if you can't pay your bills the world becomes a dark place. Mm-hmm. And then you factor in the last factor, and that's no fear of death. And then it becomes what sadly would seem to be a logical choice. Well, veterans, many of them, Cliff, are better off being the captain of their own rowboat than trying to fit into a big ocean liner and sing somebody else's song, so to speak. They're fully capable of doing it themselves. Mm-hmm. I tell people, Audie Murphy, wouldn't have been a candidate to be the VP of sales at Frito-Lay. <laughs> he could sure run a business of his own. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got we got it. a bunch of those now. Sure. And so That's great. we need to give these people, we need to let them know, number one, we're out there and we'll help mm-hmm. them. Veterans are very relational. Mm-hmm. We work mm-hmm. together as a team. Mm-hmm. So we want more of them to come on our site, sign up. We'll work with them. We want to go to the South Side in particular. We need uh, to find people that want to sell. We're going to hook them up with people to be veterans that want to get in and run those businesses, and then let's keep it going. I just like what you're saying relative to, well, the whole the whole plan is great, without a doubt, I mean, getting veterans into business. But, uh, you know, Counselor, when you mentioned particularly the south side of Chicago, that makes me, I'm, I live on the south side of Chicago. And I know exactly uh, there's a lot of things that are needed there. How, how did you just know that, or what? Why, why did you mention specifically the South Side? Well, when I left the Marine Corps in 83, Cliff, I moved here mm-hmm. and uh, worked in the city for a number of years. And before I started going out and running companies and doing those kinds of things, mm-hmm. uh, Bill Hooks is a dear friend of mine. Great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Bill, Bill mm-hmm. actually worked for me in the Marine Corps for a period of time. Okay. We were on the defense side of cases. Then we worked in law firms together, and he became a, a criminal court judge on the mm-hmm. south side of Chicago where right. he's at now. Mm-hmm. So I've been going down there and working with Bill on cases. And uh, as I said, w- the one thing I love about the military, and I think we've got it right, Colin Powell has a view of this, We are all God's children. We are his kids. For a long time in this country, we got some things we got to get straight on. We need to work together as a team. Uh, And we do that in the Marine Corps. We mix master everybody from whatever their background is. And, you know, uh, we don't care what what their ethnicity is, rich, poor, whatever, educated or not. We, we, We make them all mutually miserable. They've got to get through it together. They come out to together, and when we line up across from somebody else, that somebody else is going to be in for a long day. 
Now, we can apply that out here in the civilian world, and we need to do that. So Bill and I talk about this all the time. So when you look at an issue where there's need for people to, there's a need in the economy, there's a need for hope, there are all these kinds of things. Who better to get in there than, than military folks and veterans? Mm-hmm. We're in for the long haul. Mm-hmm. Uh, we fight as a team. We work as a team. So, and I'm a downstate hick. You see the same thing, Cliff, I was down there in my hometown, East Central Illinois. Those town squares, Yeah, they've been emptied out. Wow. Walmart made a lot of money. So did yeah. uh, so did Costco, right? Yeah. True. But uh, at, at, there's there was a lot of a, a lot of uh, carnage, so to speak, or unfortunate aspects of that, and that is mm-hmm. that small town America really suffered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they need opportunities too. It applies in both those segments in particular. That's that's great. We uh, we're getting some great information here relative to veteran business project, and uh, it's just great to have these two gentlemen here, Len Lauder and Dale Eisenberg. We're going to come back with more in just a moment, and this is America's Heroes Group. Uh, And don't forget, uh, 312-374-8130 is our number. We'll be back with more. Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON, America's Heroes Group. And uh, we are continuing with... uh, guest in the studio that are giving us some great information. Uh, Veteran Business Project. A lot of people probably didn't know this existed. No, I didn't. And uh, not only, I'm I'm so happy, I'm going to talk to him afterwards and see if I can get a job. (laughs) 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 You've heard Lynn Lauder, who was a a major in the U.S. Marines, veteran co-founder and co-CEO of the Veteran Business Project, also in the studio with us is Dale Eisenberg, son of a World War II pilot and co-founder, also of the Veteran Business Project. And you folks are just, uh, what you've come up with is just great. Again, I want to make sure I don't forget the number, 312-374-8130, if somebody wants to call in and ask a question. We have such a conversation going during the break. Um, I, I still, it, it was very interesting because in just talking, Dale mentioned the fact that uh, not only uh, we've talked about the South Side. You've had an experience there. Yeah, I yeah, actually, uh, uh, gosh, it's 35 years ago. We went in and we uh, converted a B.F. Goodrich on 87th by Cottage Grove. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we were there for uh, almost 13 years. And I had a young man named Leslie Noel who started with me from day one. Great kid. Worked his way up from dishwasher to assistant to manager. And ultimately, I sold him the business. So that's wow. actually the process. So mm-hmm. somebody like myself, we were ahead of the game. This is what I did. I wound up taking back part of the loan and was able to get them financed with Seaway Bank. Everything went great after that. Um, so that's kind of our process as well. In veteranbusinessproject.org, and they would let us know where they want to go. And from there, we start establishing a relationship and move as quickly as the veteran wants to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're just kind of looking. Sometimes they're a little afraid. Sure, certainly. They're not Mm -hmm. sure what they want to do, especially Mm -hmm. if they just transitioned out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them don't quite believe that we're going to do what we say we're going to do. For real, yeah, exactly. Because they've they've had a lot of already bad experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I do have to say, actually, and I understand you go out nationally and internationally, uh, we actually have a fantastic opportunity right now in Des Moines, Iowa. And Great. it's the same franchise that I own now, which is the original Pancake House. So uh, if we're looking for a veteran that's transitioning out or they have a family member there that they would like to be in business with, please have them contact us again. That is great. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the original Pancake House. They, uh, oh. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> the best play he's telling me, but oh, still the true. best way to reach me at all times would be the veteran business project.org. Oh, okay. Mine is my name, D Eisenberg, yeah, veteran business project.org. Okay, and is that the best way to reach you to, uh, Len? It's C Louder, C Louder, uh, yeah, C L O W D E R at uh-huh. veteran business project.org. Okay, okay, where does C come in? Charles, Charles, middle name, Len. 
Yeah, that's what I've been yeah. calling you. Lately. Growing up, it's like a boy named Sue. You better, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, better you better play football or be a Marine. <laughs> but Charles is your first name. It is, yeah. So, so where does the land come from? I mean, you yeah. know, Cliff, my my mom, country gal downstate. I asked her one time. I said, Mom. Where'd that Lynn come from? Mm-hmm. She said, oh, I don't know, son. I just thought it sounded nice. So uh, that's what I kind of live with. Then Lynn Swan came along with oh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then you, it became a lot more cool. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. You keep talking about downstate. Where where were you? Uh, born in Decatur. Oh, uh, Decatur. Yeah, yeah, bumped around. Uh, we moved around a lot, small towns, but mm-hmm. ended up at high school at Sullivan, which is the county seat. Okay. And uh, the mayor down there wants us to come down and talk to the folks about the Veteran Business Project and that CDFI program, mm-hmm. which is what we're going to use on the south side too. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Show uh, what else, what can happen out here in America if we can jump in as a team and get things done. It's a wonderful thing, and there's a lot of people. Just uh, as Dale was mentioning, that that really worked out well. So, uh, and that's a, that's we we're talking about the South Side. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm familiar, and it's it'd yeah, be a sure great are. opportunity for a veteran that came from the area mm-hmm. to get back into business. Mm-hmm. It can be a pancake house, can be whatever they like, mm-hmm. and they may even see a business that they would like to get into that's still operating. We're more than happy to go and pursue it for them. A lot of times, people want to get out of business. Yeah. They're just not. Yeah. You know, talking about it. Right. Yeah, I mean, they don't have nobody's. Yeah. Office. So that's where we step in. We've got yeah. a lot of years' experience in opening restaurants and opening businesses, and uh, we just don't want people to have to go through the same uh, rigors that we did. We can we can really streamline it for them. That's great. That's great. What normally uh, vets that come out today? I have you know I don't know many of them. You know I don't I, what. When they come to you, gentlemen, what are they looking for, or do they know? It's what interesting. No, it, yeah. it, well, that's part of the question they ask yeah. when they register. Yeah, I have somebody in Florida that wants to do a canine uh, training business. They mm-hmm. they want to train police dogs and service dogs. I have a, another fellow that was uh, special ops in the Air Force, and his interest he's not quite sure what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. But he wants to be in the intelligence area. Um, to date, probably the dog one was the most interesting. I like but, that. Uh, you get people that have I restaurants, like construction. Yeah. Some people just aren't sure. They mm-hmm. almost just want to hear that somebody else is out there that cares and will be there when they're ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and it's specifically for them. That's the important That's exactly thing. what we're yeah. for. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but we're also for the spouses, too. So let's say you have a disabled vet. Oh, great. And okay. we'll put the spouse in business. Mm-hmm. And it's a great opportunity oh, yeah. to get back into the community where people don't even know you existed. And people come back, and from my experience, uh, they're a little bit, what's the word, uh, they feel anonymous. Exactly. And mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. so this is a great way to get reintroduced in the community. People aren't quite sure what to make of them. They've gone overseas and done work, and they come back and sure. they're a little afraid. Yeah, yeah. This is a great exposure to get them back in. It certainly is because... When these veterans, and I know many of them, of course, uh, in fact, I'm going to tell some people about it. You know, I'm sorry. Well, thank I, 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 you. Know, I'm just so happy that I know about it now. You know, you guys are great. But uh, I know people who have problems, and uh, this is exactly the sort of thing that they should listen to, you know? Yeah. I think it, yeah. Uh, caller called in just for their number again. G- give your number and make sure. Uh, our, well, what they want to do is go to veteranbusinessproject.org. Okay. It's all one word. Okay, veteranbusinessproject.org. the other thing the Lynn will jump in on, too, yeah. is we're also a resource for other things. If somebody's having some other issues and they have questions and they don't know where to go, we'll do our best. I turn them over to Lynn, and he's very good at knowing where to go and who to talk to. And if we can't help them, we'll, we'll do everything we can to find out mm-hmm. who can. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's great. Yeah, lawyers can find out anything. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you, don't do that. That's right. <laughs> that's right. right. Exactly. That. Exactly. Come to Veterans uh, uh, Veteran Business Project. That's that's that's, that's said well. Well, I tell you, it's just great that uh, this is going on because, and particularly the examples you've already given, uh, there's a lot of people. I'm sure. You know, let me say this too. 
Dale, I just want to make sure, you know, you gave, uh, of course, the way of reaching them. Is there, because we have some people who may not be able, is there a number? There is. Yeah, on the right. website. Yeah. yeah. Other there than the is. website? Yeah, it's on the website. Well, the phone number we oh, want to get. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah phone I, number. Yeah. yeah, put it up there. I hate sure. to tell you, I don't have it in front of me. I never call it. Let me give you Good. mine directly. It's 630-222-5155. Okay. That's on the, uh, and that's on my card. 630-222-5155. Yes. Okay, so the person who called earlier. Yeah, give that number. Yeah, you can use that number too. 630-222-5155. Yes. That's good. Okay, that's great. Cliff, there was a comment made earlier. If Mm -hmm. if I could just add into that. Sure. Less than 0.5 of 1% of our population even serves in the military now. So give that again. Less than 0.5 of one percent, and so what happens? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, it's nowadays like yeah. in post World War II, everybody knew somebody mm-hmm. in your family that had served sure. or in the community. Right. Well, nowadays it's very common you'll run into people that have never talked to somebody in the military. Now, when you think about when people come out, it's a lot easier to fall into the cracks, frankly. If sure you're coming is. out and you're trying so to few. fit in, right? whatever fit in means now, mm-hmm. especially if you've been, this deserves mm-hmm. mentioning, we've never had a sustained operational tempo in combat ever in the history of our country like we have had since post 9-11, Cliff. You have people with six, point. eight, ten, twelve combat tours. And our special operations people, they don't count anymore. I mean, they're not counting tours. They're just going. Going. So um, that's one thing to, to, that's important. So to be able to come out and to be able to have somebody work with you, mm-hmm. uh, the way we dishonor a warrior is we, dis- is we deny them the dignity of their experience. And for mm-hmm. many people, mm-hmm. this may sound odd in a way, but Cliff, sometimes it's harder, to, it's harder to figure out where you're going when you're out of the uniform than when you were fighting in the war in, in many ways. What am I going to do now? How's this all going to work out? And if no one's there that can help you along that way, as we have in the military, good good non-commissioned officers, as an example, your NCOs, your Navy chiefs, mm-hmm. that have their eye on you and that shepherd you and get you going on the right path. Well, you come out here, that's not there. So we want to be one of those resources that people are going to get the straight language on what's going on and somebody that cares about them enough to hang with them. Uh, I want to say something, too, about women. There's an interesting trend in this country. Uh, I've been married 51 years, so I'm, I'm settled on the gender issue about <laughs> who's more well-rounded and gets things done. Congratulations. But, uh, thank you. That's all her credit, not, not oh, well, see, but that, for that, sure. Great. For that's sure. Great. She married me before I went to Vietnam, by okay. the way. Oh. Sa- her name's Sandy. She's a great lady. Beautiful. So... Um, Right now in the country, do you know that 50% of our small businesses in America are owned by women? I didn't know that. 50%. 50%? 50%. 50%, And it's growing. Now, uh, and women in the military, you know, uh, sometimes they have challenges that guys in the military don't have. Mm -hmm. There's a great network out there, by the way, and it's on on that uh, one page you have there. It's called the Rosie Network, Cliff. Stephanie Brown was the daughter of an enlisted, a career enlisted guy in the Air Force, her dad. Along the way, later in life, she married a Navy SEAL who became a two-star admiral Mm. named Tom. Uh, She started addressing the issue of spouses in the military and the ability of spouses. uh, You have men and women, obviously, that are spouses nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's still predominantly women. But uh, they get moved from duty station to duty station. A lot of times jobs are hard to get, doing volunteer work, one thing and another. She's put together a network of 20,000 spouses in a very short period of time. And it's all about encouraging women to consider entrepreneurship. And what Dale was talking earlier, think about here's the spouse that could start a business up. And when... He gets off active duty, or she in some cases. They can slide right over there, and, and, and the business is up and going. It's a phenomenal idea. Oh. So Stephanie is on our board, okay. by the way, Stephanie Brown. Okay. So does that include veteran business projects? Absolutely. That's part of it? Yep, yep. We'll so the spouse up. can be doing it? Absolutely. 
Oh, you bet. That's, that's great. Absolutely. That doubles the whole thing. Yes. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. There's a phone number. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great. Let me repeat this number. Uh, veteranbusinessproject.org or 833 883 8249. Repeating 833 883 8249. I, I am just glad, uh, Len, that you mentioned that. So the spouse is just like uh, being a veteran. They deserve. You know, in many ways. Which I agree with you, but I, I'm glad oh, yeah. you brought that up. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, in our first six years of marriage, I was overseas four. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. women and families, they definitely sacrifice and serve. Oh, absolutely. Abs- I mean, they yeah. keep the home fires burning and then some. Yeah. So I think they're one of the most underutilized aspects of our military family, of the spouses. Stephanie saw that, tapped into it, and she oh, is out great. there getting things done. That is wonderful. That is, what's her name again? Stephanie Brown. Stephanie, okay. Yeah. That is great. You know, yeah. if I could just tell you straight up. Sure. Her son, her, her husband, Tom, this career Navy SEAL, two-star admiral, was out riding his uh, bicycle, one of these, you know, mm-hmm. the bicycles that you see on the road with the helmets and everything. He was mm-hmm. hit by a car. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, he's in a real tough spot right now. Uh, out in Washington, D.C., and if anybody out there would feel uh, inclined to do it, put up a prayer for Admiral Tom Brown, mm-hmm. Stephanie's yeah, husband. Okay. It's a good man. Uh, oh, absolutely. Good couple. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a terrible thing, to, something like that to happen. Well, that is just great. You see, uh, and just think we almost... Uh, I only had you here for half an hour, and then, then we wouldn't know. <laughs> 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 Things worked out. Yeah, yeah. We, Things we, worked we, out. He said, uh, say, wait a minute, what? <laughs> but we wouldn't have known about that. That's right, yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't have known about that, because that, that, that doubles the whole idea of what you folks are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Military's a family. Yeah, that's true. We are a family. That's true. That's yeah. true. Veterans are very relationship oriented, I tell people. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, unlike Vietnam, where, you know, uh, how, how we receive people back, nowadays there's a lot of organizations out there. There's a lot of chatter, Cliff, and part of the challenges that veterans have now is figuring out who's real and who's not. So the, the, the relationship network works, and the word spreads. So military community veterans, you're one, 82nd mm-hmm. Airborne. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know that uh, we talk to each other, mm-hmm. and it doesn't take long for a veteran to figure out who's who's real and who's not. Well, so. you know, you're totally correct too, because of uh, the um, finally, and uh, of course you would have been downstate probably, but consular we had a parade here in Chicago after some a little while after mm-hmm. the Vietnam saga was over, but that helped a lot. That yes, helped a lot. Did. A lot of people were involved in that, and uh, you know, we were just so happy to see so many of the citizens yeah. turn out to. They'd gotten over it, you know. Let's let's common, you know, let's commend these people who went, yeah. you know. Amen. Yeah, exactly. I think that's that's wonderful. Well, this is just the great thing. Uh, there are so many people I know that uh, I'm going to suggest this because there's a lot of folks. Oh, thank out you. There. Yeah, there Thank are folks you, out here who, yeah, there are folks out here, as I said, hell, I might be calling you. <laughs> you know, <as> a man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean. And uh, Bill Hooks will verify me. He'll Bill's say, a, Bill, Bill, Bill's, say he, he's a great he, guy. He'll, yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll tell yeah. you I'm okay. You know, for, he's got a great thing going there on the south side. Uh, wonderful man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he certainly has been for so long. It's just great what he's doing. So this is a wonderful. What do you think now? Uh, the two of you talk to lots of people, and the situation now, and you're a 501c3, and so yeah. is America's Heroes Group, so you know. Um, but what, <laughs> have we, do we have people enlisting? Uh, numbers are down. That's what I thought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you are at uh, war for so long, it becomes a challenge. So I think the Army now is not meeting their quota. Uh, the Navy may be in that same spot. The Marine Corps is small, as you know. Yeah, sure. But, yeah, it's not uh, 
the thing is, the all-volunteer military, Cliff, they, uh, you know, the, 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 I was in active duty in the Marine Corps when that came down. Okay. Uh, and, oh, okay. And the, mm-hmm. and the proviso was, or the foundation was, remember that chant, no more Vietnams? Right. That was nine years. Yep. We're 17 years plus into this deal so. now. Yeah. So the, the yeah. assumption was with the total force concept that the Guard and Reserve are going to be put in put put right in there with everybody else. And by mm-hmm. the way, they performed admirably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, we've, uh, we're smaller, and so we've stretched people. So if you're in hometown America and you're National Guard, you work at mm-hmm. True Value, you get your first call to go overseas and get in a sandbox and fight. And your boss says, hey, uh, you know, God bless you. Good luck, and your you know, your job will be here when you get home. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and fortunately, it works out. You come home again, and you go back down. And you pick your job up, but you need to tell your boss that in a few months now, I'll probably going back again. You do that three, four, five, six times. It uh, it gets to be a challenge yeah. on both sides of that fence. Yeah. So uh, yeah. all that I think yes has had a practical impact mm-hmm. on the recruiting end of things for our military. Even in an all-volunteer environment, as I said, we're less than 0.5 of 1% of our country are serving for the rest of the country. I never would have come up with that number. I had no idea it was that small. It is. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that, that's right. You mentioned the Guard. Uh, is there any difference, in, uh, to your knowledge, of the Guard and the Reserves? Yes. Well, the Guard, National Guard, uh, good question. A lot mm-hmm. of people aren't aware of this, but the mm-hmm. National Guard, that's where the numbers right. come for the infantry for your combat arms units. Uh, the reserve is typically the service support element, okay. you know, okay. supply, motor mm-hmm. transport, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So the uh, the National Guard, very engaged, and I'll, I'll tell you, they have stepped up and done admirably. They've done very, very well. When I was at Central Missouri, that university where I was out there with that veterans program, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we had a lot of, of uh, young men and women from the National Guard in there, and these people had, had been in, in the fight, definitely yeah, in the fight. Yeah, so I'm very proud of them. Yeah. yeah. We're all, it's all one team, you know. That's great. That really is. Well, I just want to say this. Uh, there are so many people, I'm sure, that could use your – assistance getting veterans into business and i'm just so happy that uh you've given us all this great information because that's exactly what it is uh when you look and uh see all the things that you folks are doing it's it's amazing it's amazing and uh it's it's just interesting because again we just uh you know i say maybe things are getting better heard uh, this past 4th of July radio said if you are are going to use fireworks um, think of the animals Mm -hmm. for the first time I heard him say think of the animals and the veterans Hmm. interesting interesting because I do know people and I'm sure you probably do too sure who have reactions oh yeah yeah, I got a gentleman. He has helicopters. He gets flashing lights. Yeah, yep. yeah. So that's why I was so happy that they finally said that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. good. Uh, you gentlemen have been nothing short of great. I just love. What, let me give this number again: veteranbusinessproject.org. And the number is, if you don't want to go that way, eight three three, eight eight three. 8249. Again, veteranbusinessproject.org, 883, I'm sorry, strike that, 833-883-8249. And we've been honored to have uh, Veterans Business Project. Yes, I was just going to say, I, I, I was wondering what to call this gentleman. I don't want to call him a Fantastic. lawyer. Fantastic. Yeah, well, I've been calling him. I'm just a Marine. Major. Just a Marine. A lawyer, you know, I could go on and on. Yeah, but he's, he's Charles. I got that too. I'm just, 